the gallery and at the back this other seating arrangement for students please don't sit in the main chamber thank you Then take your seat up at the gallery and the white chairs behind. Thank you. Please rise for the 
the Vice Chancellor's procession. The Vice Chancellor's procession is led by the Deputy Registrar Senate Matters, Mr. Bundy Obey. The procession comprises the Provost College of Medical Sciences, Deans of Faculties, Directors of Academic Programs and Institutes, the inaugural lecturer, principal officers of the university, and of course, the vice chancellor herself. Thank you. to take the national anthem. May be seated. The Vice Chancellor, our distinguished Professor Lilia Nimoti and Salami, other principal officers of the university, provost, deans, and directors, professors emeriti, other professors and scholars here present, top government functionaries, your royal highnesses, staff and students, invited guests. Gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's inaugural lecture. This is the 253rd in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin to be delivered by Professor Paul Osereme Adobane, an outstanding professor of ear, nose, throat, head and neck surgery on the topic ear, nose, throat head and neck surgery, my eye through which I have seen the world. May I now invite the Registrar, Mr. Ademola Bobola, to invite the Vice-Chancellor and members of the Vice-Chancellor's procession. Registrar. 
Please allow me to abide by the existing protocol. With your kind permission, please allow me to present to this august body the principal officers of this university, including your own distinguished staff, the deans, the provost, the deans of our faculties directors who are on your entourage. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have a, a load of uh, names before me here, but let me start by uh, presenting to Ross, the Vice Chancellor of this university, who has been variously described and according to the protest law and chairman of council, describing her as a transformational leader and a woman who is pursuing a lot of revolution, particularly the revolution of transforming this university, University of Benin, the universe of the universe. And part of the revolution is to lead women to the, for, uh, to the forefront driving women to the background. But distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor and privilege to present to us a distinguished academic, a heroine of her time, a woman of valor, and the second female substantive vice chancellor of this university, and of course, a fellow of many reputable bodies, both within and outside this country, the co-chair association of vice chancellors of Nigerian universities, ABCNU, and currently the vice president, Association of African Universities. <laughs> the distinguished Professor Lillian Ibatsinian Salami, our Vice Chancellor. I think we should sustain that uh, applause more than that for a woman to be ruling in Africa. Yeah, thank you so much. The Vice Chancellor is a pride to us to have the only Nigerian and the only female standing as the Vice President of the universities in Africa. Of course, when you have a very great person, it means there are many great persons also around that person. And when you talk of David, for those of you who are biblical students, you talk of the men of David, one of them who killed so many giants at the same time. So we have those who are standing, the uh, people who are standing with the vice chancellor so that you can continue to do the blaze, blazing job of winning for the women folk. And so we have the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, Professor Adesua Osao. And uh, living, leading the academic sphere, you know, University of Benin is highly reputable in academic matters all over the universe. And that's why it remains the topmost and in that regard, we have the man coordinating the academic affairs as Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor David Mutanhari II. <laughs> we also have the, uh, the representative of the BOSA, who is uh, not immediately around, that's Dr. Victor Imadwe, but also uh, represented here by distinguished Accountant Dr. Dominic Eche. I have a host of other persons I want to present to this occasion. 
uh, uh, the, the format is in this way. Just allow me to go on to present the deans of the various uh, uh, faculties. First, I have the dean of basic medical sciences, who I know uh, is putting on the gown, but is wearing a brown suit, Professor Efo Agoreo. Then we have a brand new dean, possibly attending the third inaugural lecture since his assumption of duty. Professor Osara Winda is the dean of faculty of engineering. The dean of faculty of environmental sciences, Professor P.S. Tokedebe is also here with us. Well, uh, the time the vice chancellor was coming in, so many uh, other issues were coming up. But the order that I have here, please accept the way I present it. If your name was not there, maybe what you captured at the point of coming in. The representative of the Dean Faculty of Management Sciences, Dr. A.O. Izeko, is also here. We have the Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, Professor N.U. Nwabo, is also here. And then the Director of CRPU and ICT, Professor David Obeyfum, is also here with us. Director of Students, Guidance and Counseling, Professor Mrs. V.E.I. Audu. We have the first director to be here today where we are preparing and possibly he wants to take the baton for the next inaugural lecture. The Director of Center for Educational Technology, Professor H. Oyehena, is also here. And we have the Director of Institute of Child Health, Dr. D. Nwaneri is also here with us. And um, very closely seated at the back of the registrar's place there is the deputy registrar in charge of Senate matters, Mr. M. I. Away. Well, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today has been very unique. The rain has blessed all of us to make us very cool and calm and then we want to enjoy the good uh, flavor of the meal being prepared today in the nose, uh, ear, throat, and all the rest of them, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I have so, I'm not permitted by protocol, and I also lack the ability to do so. With the permission of the Vice Chancellor, may I request you, request you ma'am, so please address this gathering and present the inaugural lecture. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am sure we are wondering why we all decided to come in here, which is not the usual venue for inaugural lectures. But let me first uh, apologize that uh, we have to just do this. I am sure by the time you see even the work that has been done in uh, the auditorium so far, you will truly say this is the university, the universe of the universe. So we're working to make sure that that is the, the door that opens anytime anyone comes to this university, and it must be defeating. For some of us, for the last few years, we're almost ashamed to have uh, functions in that uh, a great uh, hall. So now we are turning it around, and I'm sure, like I said, the next time you are there, you will truly applaud this administration. Thank you. So it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 250th in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin. Today's lecture is the 25th to be delivered in my tenure as the Vice Chancellor of this great university. 
and the fifth research in the School of Medicine, College of Medical Sciences, and the second in the Department of e Ear, Nose, Throat, Head, and Neck Surgery. I am glad to inform you that lectures have commenced in all faculties, school, institutes for the 2020-2021 academic session. The 2019-2020 sessional results have been considered and released in almost all faculties, schools, and uh, institutes. I want to use this opportunity to solicit for the cooperation of all stakeholders in ensuring the smooth takeoff of the 2020-2021 academic session. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the lecturer for today. He is Professor Paul Osereme Adobami. Throat, head and neck surgery. My eye through which I have seen the whole world. Professor Adobame was born on the 2nd of February 1969 in Urumi, Edo State, to the family of Mr. Peter Clifford Adobame and Mrs. Victoria Adobame, both of blessed memory, from Aniocha, North Local Government Area. Professor Adobame attended Uhe Primary School, Ubiaja, from 1974 to 1980. He attended Immaculate Conception College University, where he had his... Oh, these people must be from ICC. The great ICC. Not as great as Baptist High School. <laughs> where he had his West African School Certificate in 1985. He proceeded to the University of Benin and obtained his MBBS degree in 1992 and served as a medical house officer at the Central Hospital, Benin City, in 1993. He then had his mandatory NYSC at the police clinic, Benin City, from 1994 to 1995. He joined the services of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in 1998 as a medical officer and later started his residency training in 2001. He passed his part one and part two fellowship examination rapidly to back the fellowship of the National Postgraduate Medical College of, now that is a word, these medical people, you have to stop with all these lologies that you are giving to me. I will just say E-N-T-H, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, in Lagos in 2006, and the fellowship of the West African College of Surgeons, Lagos in 2007. He was immediately converted to a consultant in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital in 2007. Professor Adobane joined the services of the University of Benin as lecturer one in 2009, and rose through the ranks to the position of a full chair professor of ENT neck and head surgery in 2015. His area of primary research focus is in autology, audiology, and preventive, you know, I'm going to try to read that word, autorhinologic, -rhino is that what it is? Good attempt. A good attempt yes. for a nutritionist. Yes. Thank you very much. He had held several administrative and academic positions within and outside the University of Benin, such as associate editor and also of uh, medical sciences from 2010 to 2020, assistant secretary, medical and dental consultant association of Nigeria, MD Tan, 2009 to 2011, secretary, medical and dental consultant association of Nigeria, from 2011 to 2013, course coordinator, primarily update course on ORL works 2013 to 2015, 
faculty board member of ORL faculty, National Programming Medical College of Nigeria 2014 to 2016, head department of ENTH and end surgery, UBTH 2017 to 2021. He's been course advisor for the 500 level medical students from 2017 to date. Coordinator of audiology technicians program, Institute of Health Technology, UBTH from 2008 to 2012. Associate lecture, lecturer in ENTH and N surgery, Igbenedio University, Okada from 2007 to 2009. Professor Ado Bane, had attended and presented papers at several conferences, both locally, nationally, and internationally. He is a recipient of several awards and has secured foreign grants from Pan-African Thoracic Society. He has served as external examiner in the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria and the West African College of Surgeons. He has supervised six part two final dissertations and over 100 residents from different teaching hospitals in Nigeria. He also drew up the curriculum for training as a coordinator of the audiology technicians program in UBTH and succeeded in training over 60 middle level manpower in the diagnosis and rehabilitation of impaired hearing. I thought we'd clap for that. Professor Adobane belongs to several professional bodies and associations, such as Nigeria Medical Association, Medical and Dental Consultants of Niger Association, uh, ENT Society of Nigeria, American Academy of uh, ENT, uh, Head and Neck Surgery Foundation. Professor Adobane is an entrepreneur and inventor with interest in real estate, I wonder. Stock exchange and automobiles. <laughs> He's a devoted Christian and evangelist. He loves evangelizing and listening to me, Christian music. He is married to Mrs. Teresa Adobame and their union is blessed with six children. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Paul Osahene Adobane, a professor of ENTH and neck surgery, to deliver his lecture. Thank you. Madam Vice Chancellor, Professor Eli Salami, kindly permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I dedicate this lecture to the entire bride of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who knew me before the foundation of the world and ordained me to be part and pastor of his kingdom, and granted me the way with that to deliver this lecture this evening. To the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, he that was, he that is, and he that will be, be all glory, honor, dominion, praise, wisdom, and blessing forever and ever. Amen. I give me the great privilege and the mark of honor to deliver the 253rd in the inaugural lecture series of the Great University of Benin. Madam Vice Chancellor, I'm grateful to you for the approval of this lecture. I say thank you and God bless you. Kindly permit me to say a short word of prayer. Almighty Father, we thank thee today for the gift of life. May your Holy Spirit give us guidance and leadership as we take authority over every spirit present and will bring them all under our control to the glory of God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I was in stress as to what to deliver for this inaugural lecture. As far back as 10 years ago, as a senior lecturer, I decided to share my highly specialized professional experience with this August gathering in the friendly month of August. But the findings from my research dissertation for my postgraduate diploma in education, titled Awareness and Knowledge of Ear, Nose, Throat, Head and Neck Surgery Specialty among secondary school students in the local government area, and from wide interaction during my practice, revealed that the specialty of ear, nose, and throat, head and neck surgery is not well known or popular. During the first brain drain period of the 80s, some medical students had inadequate or no exposure to this highly specialized subspecialty of surgery. I therefore decided three years ago, when I, was, when I started planning my inaugural lecture, to be more light on the rudiments of ear, nose, throat, head, head and neck surgery specialty. 
This lecture was originally scheduled for the 26th of, 27th of August 2020, exactly a year ago. No thanks to the COVID-19 lockdown at that time. To my highly esteemed academics, behold, the time has come to gap, has come to town. Kindly permit me, therefore, to use the language that the town understands for effective communication. My dear Vice Chancellor, the title of my lecture is Ear, Nose, Truth, Head and Neck Surgery. My eye, through which I've seen the whole world. This is the second inaugural lecture to be delivered by an ear, nose, truth, head and neck professor in this university. The first was delivered by Professor Efo Gisi in 2011. His title was Let Them Hear, Auto Microsurgery and Hair Restoration. He delivered that lecture when we were still in surgery department. But the Senate of the University of Benin in 2018 created the Department of Ear, Nose, Throat, Head and Neck Surgery. So this is the first inaugural lecture from the Department of Ear, Nose, Throat, Head and Neck Surgery. <laughs> ear, Nose, Throat, Head and Neck Surgery is the study of the ear, nose, throat, head and neck regions of the body, the associated diseases and their management. Ear, nose, throat, head and neck surgery will be abbreviated as ENT, head and neck surgery for the purpose of this lecture. ENT is also appropriately referred to as otorhinolaryngology, head and neck surgery. Madam Vice Chancellor, a highly placed monarch who was the guest of honor in an auspicious event could not twist his tongue and risk lo losing two, two or three teeth to pronounce otorhinolaryngology. Instead, he coined the word otoriola in place of otorhinolaryngology. So whether I say ENT, or ENT head and neck, or otorhinolaryngology, or otoriola, I am saying the same thing. Thank you. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the light, light gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Mother Vice Chancellor, the ear, nose, throat, head and neck are required to completely give glory to God. Without an intact ear, nose, throat, head and neck, one cannot be a good choir master. <laughs> Early education. I attended a primary school between 1974 to 1980. I graduated as the bell ringer, general monitor, head boy, and with the best result in primary school's first school living certificate in my set. <laughs> in primary school, I learned, and also my mother used to teach me, be kind to everybody, be kind to everyone, be kind to everybody, and everybody will be kind to you. I presented to Immaculate Convention College in this city. There I was trained under the street guidance and tutelage under the leadership of Dr. Joseph Itoto, a renowned teacher who was my principal. He was elected the president of the World Association of Teachers and later became a minister of state for education in Nigeria. Pardon me to say that as, a, as an ENT and next surgeon, I had inputs in his treatment before he passed to the great beyond at the intensive care unit of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. May the source of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in perfect peace. Amen. We had highly skilled, motivated, proficient teachers in all the subjects. Although I always scored between 97 and 99 percent in all, almost all the subjects, especially the art and social science subjects in my junior classes, I however pitched my tent with the science class in senior class as I already made up my mind to be a doctor in primary school when my mother took me to see a when my mother took me as a patient to see a doctor. My surgeon into ENT and the next surgery was by divine inspiration and guidance. The figure you are seeing shows uh, the outer ear or external ear. This figure shows the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Now, what are the symptoms of ear, nose, throat, head, and neck pathology? In other words, when somebody has a problem with the ear, nose, throat, head, and neck, what does it present with? My present with pain in the ear, discharge from the ear, growth in the ear, bleeding from the ear, deformity of the ear, foreign body in the ear, hearing loss, blocked ear, noise in the ear, dizziness, sensation of spinning around, lightheadedness, itching of the ear, hearing loss, refers to a decrease in the hearing ability of a patient. We conducted a study to look at the pattern of hearing loss in the city. Out of 980 patients, 281 or 28.7% had hearing loss, and the main autolipular factors were chronic supportive otitis media, Autotoxic, drug toxicity and presbya acusis. We also looked at the at drug induced hearing loss and we found out that the main drugs that were implicated were chloramphenicol, quinine, and chloroquine. They were the commonest drugs causing autotoxicity in, in our patients. We therefore emphasized that appropriate prescription and general deployment of pre preventive strategies in all ramifications can never be overemphasized. 
We also look, carry on the study on the prevalence of auto transition in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. Here also, Quenin again was there, Toro Queen was also there, and native medications were also there. We advise that Quenin should be prescribed with caution, and if possible, with a geometric and condition level monitoring. We also alluded to the fact that there should be a drug policy guiding the dosage, prescription, and potency of herbal drugs. Hearing loss is usually associated with some symptoms. As a precautionary measure, when the patient presents with a history of these symptoms, it is advisable to also screen out if there is hearing loss. We therefore carried out a study to elucidate the symptoms associated with hearing loss in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. And we found out that tinnitus, catar, nasal obstruction, ear itching, fullness, fullness of the ear were the symptoms that were associated with hearing loss. We therefore advise that a holistic approach should be done in the management of patients having these symptoms. CSOM has been described as a stage of ear disease in which there is chronic infection of the middle ear cleft and in which a non-intact dependent membrane and discharge are present. CSOM has been known to cause conductive and sustainable hearing loss. So as a, because of this, we tried to validate this uh, idea and we did a study to find the pattern of hearing loss due to chronic subjective otitis media. So the autogram shows, here yeah, shows a conductive hearing loss for both right and left ear. We therefore conclude that chronic subjective media will cause conductive hearing loss mostly but also sensorineural hearing loss and military loss can also be present in the patients. And we advise for a preventive, therapeutic, and rehabilitative aspects in the management of these patients. Tympanoplasty. It involves eradication of disease in the middle ear and the construction of the sound conducting apparatus of the ear. We therefore did a 10-year study to review the outcome of tympanoplasty we have been doing in Benin City. We got a success rate of 66.6% and we advise that as well as by emphasizing the training of residents in middle ear surgery should be encouraged. Ad hoc constitution of tropical antibiotic solution for ear dressing as a necessity. The antibiotic ear drop used for ear dressing in patients with CSOM usually contains the synthetic antibiotics from the micro microscopic culture and sensitivity study. However, in some patients, even though you have an MCS result, the, the drugs implicated do not come in ear drop preparation. So, there will be nothing to use in topical uh, dressing for the patient. Because of this, we therefore did a study to find out ad hoc preparation of ear drop for Others are reduction in the sense of smell. That hypothesis is unknown to medical science. Hawking of the throat, this uh, is sharpener, these cuff links for your shirt, this cell battery, there's nothing they cannot put in, they cannot put in their throat. Let's go to rhinos and sinusitis. It refers to disorders characterized by inflammation of the mucosa of the nose and paralysis sinuses. Some symptoms of rhinos sinusitis include nasal obstruction, nasal discharge, facial pain, hypoxia, usually present with watery nasal discharge, nasal obstruction, nasal itching, excessive sneezing, paralysis, maybe 20 or 30 times sneezing, associated with itching and watery nose. Of the nose in UBTH and water drip, nasal discharge, nasal blockage, excessive sneezing. Those were the main symptoms we found out. Adobe Me, a bad way, the early 2017. This is the, uh, uh, figure, of the uh, figure shows the anatomy of the nose, different parts of the nose. The book is there, please kindly get the book. I can hardly scratch the, the, the surface of what I'm lecturing. Get the book so that you can see what of the things that yes. It's not a normal thing though. Growth in the throat, sore throat, itching of the throat. Uh, bringing back swallowed food back into the mouth, regurgitation, roughness of voice. We carry out this and hoarseness in asthmatics. And we hypothesize that these features appear to be due to the allergic tendencies. Adobame, Ebabe 2014. Madam Vice Chancellor, if Chelsea, if Chelsea and Man United, to, it's like I've heard great people talking of hoarseness of the voice. But there's only one part of the body that can get hoarse. It's akin to saying, I saw you with my eyes yesterday. As a extraordinary singing, abuse or misuse of voice as a, as a scene in teachers, singers, musicians, pastors, evangelists. 
hot, hot, uh, hot roughness of the voice develops. In all these cases, hotness are based before the end of the first week, but hardly ever persists for more than two weeks. Anxion number three, whenever you presume to have a cancer of the voice apparatus until proven otherwise. It may not be cancer, but the onus is on the patient to present to the ENT head and neck surgeon. And the onus is on the ENT head and neck surgeon to demonstrate to the patient that it is a cancer or it is not a cancer. But there's a simple test that can be done with the aid of a laryngeal mirror. Is that it into the throat? You look, look into the throat. The other things that can cause uh, cancer, they are there, that can cause roughness of the voice. They are, they are there in my book. Recurrent laryngeal papillomatosis presents with varying degrees of hoarseness in children and adults. It is linked to the human papilloma virus. And the baby, while passing through the bed canal, contacted the HPV infection. It presents with hoarseness, then difficulty in breathing, then obstruction, asphyxia, and then death. The treatment is to secure the airway by performing a tracheostomy and then presenting city. This is the table, and what did I find? Chronic laryngitis, cancer of the larynx, and tobacco laryngitis were the common causes of hoarseness in Benicity. The average duration of hoarseness before presentation was 539 days. A year plus, people have hoarseness, roughness of the voice, for up to 539 days before they ever presented, showing a lackluster attitude to, to present for diagnosis and treatment. Now, we also found out that hoarseness due to cancer was described as progressive, unremitting. Tracheostomy. It's an opening made into the trachea of the anterior neck and the maintenance of the opening by a tube. This is a life saving procedure. The best time to perform a tracheostomy is the first time you ever think about it. There's no no contraindication to perform a tracheostomy when there's indication for it. If the patient is denied the tracheostomy when there's obstruction of the airway, maximum of five minutes, the patient suffers from irreversible brain damage and the brain sparingly recovers from irreversible brain damage. There are many other causes of uh, 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 upper airway obstruction that will cause uh, tracheostomy, but let me go forward to secure the airway within five minutes to prevent abysmal sequence. We did a publication to validate our successive findings on a safer technique in the extension of the trachea without transient trachea estimation of the tracheostomy tube in total laryngectomy. In the normal practice, at the time, they will extubate the trachea, quickly cut it. There will be panic among the with these patients that were extubated, and then there was another group that would not extubate. For those that were extubated, look at urgent saturation drop to 78, 75. Uh, claim that uh, in total laryngectomy, it is better not to estimate the trachea. We invented it and we are recommending this simple test shot of Asikene 2013. <laughs> Adenoids and toxicitis are common cases in ENT and next the clinic. Some children from infancy to seven or eight years of life will come with adenoid features mouth breathing, noisy breathing, opening of the mouth, pointed nasal tip. Adenoids is due to the narrowing of the nasopharyngeal airway by lymphoid tissue. Some patients to adenoid. Patients will present for diagnosis and collaborative treatment or adenoidectomy. X-ray of the prosthesis space will show the adenoid vegetation. Adenoid difficulty in swallowing, painful swallowing, and patients are treated collaboratively, and when indicated, to select me for removal of the tonsils is carried out. Caveat. Inflamed pharynx and tonsils or pharyngotosylitis, the referrals commonly visit quack traditional doctors, requesting bleeding, sepsis, deformity of the oropharyngeal inlet, and in some cases, death of the patients. Kindly consult your ENT and neck surgeon for appropriate counseling and treatment. Now, this, now, can you listen to this short tape? A few years after the wedding, I developed pains in my throat. I visited a traditional doctor and he treated me by cutting a part of my throat. The pain left. It was when I went for antenatal check that I received the shocking news that I was HIV positive. After the side news, I began to ponder on how I contacted HIV. My husband is HIV, is HIV ne negative. I remember that the local uvula specialist carried out surgery with the same nurse with the same knife. He used the same knife for all of us. He also did not sterilize the instruments. I believe that was where I contacted the virus, she said. While relieving his histological trust, I went to his clinic, but I was told that he, the native doctor, was dead. Medical experts in several interviews with the Sunday Point said that the quack doctors had infected many pregnant residents of the state that is conquistated with HIV. In 2013, there were 23,719 women with HIV. By 2015, his friends are still everywhere around trying to treat the so-called belu belu. I researched on hemorrhage associated with tonsillectomy, how often blood transition indicated. To dispel the fear of unknown, associated with uh, parents refusing adenoid tonsillectomy. In our series, we found out that the blood loss was minimal. And also, out of the series, only one patient was ever transfused. Preoperative workup, adenoid tonsillectomy can be done with little or no, uh, with markedly reduced blood, blood loss. So there's no need to patronize foreign body the truth. Various foreign bodies have been swallowed by patients, including coins, soft drinks, cork, or cover, tortoise, razor blade, big cola nut, whole fish, 
I personally observed the removal of a very sharp razor blade and a large collar knot that was swallowed during my residency training at the University of Enugu Teaching Hospital. I've also personally removed a padlock, padlock, a cloth peg, and coins of different sizes of different denominations from the throats of patients. Although the rationale for swallowing some of this fire, black African power as a do or die phenomenon, Madam Vice Chancellor. Swallow denture and remover. People wearing denture occasionally swallow them or they hang in their throat, leading to perforation of the esophagus, retropharyngia abscess, even uh, stenosis and death. We therefore look at the risk factors associated. They swallow their denture, or when they are asleep, or when they are drinking, swallow their denture. We also found out that some, okay, do not remove their denture when they are going to sleep, or do not remove their denture also uh, when they are taking their drugs. We also found out some habits. Some people have been wearing their denture for 15 years. They've never gone to visit the, the dental surgeon. Some have been wearing it for 13 years. They have never gone to visit their dental surgeon. We, de we therefore concluded that removal of unsecured dental processes before eating. Drinking water or drugs will likely reduce the incidence of injection. Difficulties in the removal of denture after injection and the reported death from injection of removable partial denture. We look at the diagnostic and therapeutic strategies in denture removal after injection in developing and emerging country in Nigeria. This is an x ray showing the denture. You may not see it very clearly, but it's a denture there imparted in the throat. It does not go down, it does not come out. Patient cannot swallow, cannot drink. Okay? Having a denture, you find that you have difficulty in swallowing or a pointing sign, patient will point. Here, it's difficult. Here, it's pain in me. And highly specific and tactical rigid esophagoscopy will be diagnosed. Now, look at this patient, head and neck. What are the symptoms of head and neck uh, uh, pathology? Facial pain, headache, growth of swelling in the head and neck region. Of particular importance in thyroid gland. Look at look, this is a highly vascularized organ. This is often involved in a number of pathologies leading to thyroiditis, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, and even malignancy of the thyroid gland. A good history is the mission globally. Head and neck surgeons specialize in the treatment of lesions of the head and neck, including thyroid and parathyroid disease, in conjunction with endocrinologists. They are also responsible for the management of neck masses that are varied, whether congenital, inflammatory, infective, trauma, and the poor view of the head and neck surgeon globally. Although other surgeons, apart from head and neck surgeons, have been traditionally managed in thyroid gland, the time has come for a consensus to be adopted in the management of thyroid gland in our environment. Or bend to one side, drooling of saliva from the side of the mouth at rest, or food falling out from the side of the mouth while eating. All these are features of facial neck worsening, and there are so many causes. Check my bladder foot. This mat is debated to this other side. This is an example of facial neck worsening. This is not a this, this is not a live picture. It's just a diagram. So please, pardon from me. But this man approach the patient's management. Time shift from solo method. One doctor will admit a patient. He's a surgeon. He's a gynecologist. He's a pediatrician. He's a plastic surgeon. No. We engage in this elaborate research with the hope that it will change the seat tight on the patient mentality. They hold the patient, do everything with the patient. When the patient wants to die, they have collected the money, they rush the patient to UBTH. So we therefore decided to carry out this research as a core to the synergistic benefit of working as a team in the clinical uh, department and to encourage others to emulate this pattern of patient care for better results. The EMO's throat head and x-ray department functions as a team in the University of the Nation Hospital. This deliberate arrangement, which is of many benefit to our patients, is in furtherance of our vowed disciplinary approach to patient management. What are the patients from teamwork of the consultants is greater than the simple sum of activities of individual consultants. You may say that we controversy, that we correct it. Well, check our series. You'll find out that the way we resolve some of our controversy are aligned in my book. Check the book. Deliberate self neglect. Over my research period, I've seen a set of patients who, whose, whose attitude to their clinical conditions shows reckless abandonment. I have, with great thinking, tried to philosophize the rationale for their gross inhumanity to themselves. But could not find any documentation of similar inspiration. In my quest to address this social and clinical malady, I coined, I coined the word deliberate self-neglect. The man I want son, I can't kill myself. But can a man kill himself? Even if a man can, even if a man can kill himself, can a man kill himself by himself? Deliberate self-neglect is a key to a man killing himself by himself. This is a lady with this neck swelling for more than eight years. She only saw me about four weeks ago. I gave her investigation to do, and I even breached protocol. Come the next, the next, the next man presented to my clinic with a referral from the professor of general surgery with a huge anterior neck swelling of 20 years duration. After investigating and optimizing him, I succeeded in exercising the mass in theater. The man bled profusely during and after surgery. I transfused four units of blood. Although we ask for the fifth pint of blood with all persuasion, with threat, bring it. If the man died, he wait for 20 years. 
at 75 years before he came to remove the anterior neck swelling. Number two, a 70 year old man brought his 45 year old son, who was now married with wife and children to my clinic, claiming that his 45 year old son was deaf and dumb from birth. On examination, I diagnosed he profound hearing loss. But why did he wait for 45 years, getting married, having children, before coming to solve a problem that started from birth? There's another example. Action is better than kill. I've engaged in different research endeavors aimed at promoting preventive strategies in different areas of healthcare. Find needle aspiration biopsy. It's a simple investigation. You, you can tell if it's a cancer or not, and then you manage the patient appropriately. Why wait for eight years? Why wait for 20 years? I did a study with Ekanem to find out uh, uh, the effectiveness of fine needle aspiration cytology. I mean, I found out that it was a quick method of arriving at diagnosis of, of patients. We also emphasize the need to improve the awareness and utilization of FMAC for quicker early diagnosis of tumors. I don't mind coming in 2005. We also have a research on the awareness of doctors. We are aware of this easy, simple, cost-effective, and easily uh, easy method of making arriving at diagnosis for patients. We concluded by advising medical practitioners to use FMA, HIV infection. In the days when the infection was an unmitigated scourge, the risk of head procedure to be invented by patients who did not know their HIV status was quite high. In Nigeria, it has been estimated that 3.6% of risk. We investigated the outcome of retroviral patients among patients going for ENT head and neck surgery. Patients coming for a surgery, we just, we took consent for them, we screened them for uh, retroviral infection. Out of 173, four of them were found to be retroviral negative and they did not know to begin with. So with, the, with, this, uh, uh, with this information, we never performed the surgery with appropriate precautionary measures, and there was no untoward sequelae. Household air pollution is a call for action. Burning of solid flares emit a complex mixture of particulate matters less than 2.5 micrometers. Disproportionately bears 32% of the attributable body of, of, of the disease. This paper, which was published in the Lancet Journal of Respiratory Medicine, attempted to discourage the use of firewood. Old tires of fuel. It is everywhere. It is fraught with a lot of respiratory complications and even death. Due to the prevalence of hearing loss, we investigated the etiological factors and dimensions of tympanic membrane preparation in Benicity, Nigeria. We found out that most of the causes of ear drum preparation were chronic subotipatitis, acute subotipatitis, and trauma. Very common. Slap to the face. Early presentation of patients was therefore advised, and we also advised that exhibiting a high sense of temperance, even in the face of extreme provocation, advice as preventive strategies against the panic membrane perforation. Well, and this were due to whether motorbike accidents, as attempted kidnapping, uh, physical assault, all forms of assault. Of what is some importance, scooping fuel from a, from a bus pipe. The next thing you see flames, head and neck region is, is involved. If not careful, they cannot survive the burns that, 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 that occurs there. We therefore advise that people commit development. First, my contribution to ENT and Neck Surgery in the University of Benin. The conceptualization of the Department of ENT and Neck Surgery in the University of Benin started way back as 1985. It went through rigorous times but never saw the light of day. When I was appointed the head of the Department of ENT and Neck Surgery in UBTH in 2017, I made it a point of duty to ensure, that, and with the combined effort of the Provost, Professor Efosa Obiasu, and the then DC Mark, and then uh, DBC Academic, Professor Pasi Ribogwe, it culminated in the creation of the ENT and Neck Surgery Department in the University. Madam Vice Chancellor, it is your mantra that if you see the quality of a certificate from a university depends on the quality of the processes that led to the award of that certificate. I went to his university recently, and this is what I saw. Do I read it for you? It says the new order against vices, examination and practice, etc. See something, say something. Madam Vice Chancellor, I have seen something. But the power to say something does not lie in my domain. So I cannot say something. Let the highly esteemed Senate of the University, greatest university of Benin, the hallowed chamber, say Anxium 4, prevention is better than cure. To prevent the dimension of my practice, the university <laughs> should lay a foundation to discourage it. That is why I stand fully with the university rule that empowers departments to prevent students who have not made 70% attendance at lectures and particular sessions for writing exams. They are really not qualified to take such exams because they have not met the course of objectives. To obviate this ugly monster in any head and neck surgery department, 15 days they come for a posting. If they can't make 11 out of 15 days posting, they have to do their media posting. 
They don't go for the media posting, they get zero in ENT, in the conditions assessment to the final MBBS examination. First chance, there will be no official textbook for ENT and next surgery and graduate students. Dovetail to meet the customized needs since the university opening was created. To circumvent this lack, under my headship, the department, midwife, the author of the medicine, the textbook is presently in the press. Best price in ENT and next surgery. I also with approval and down the best price in ENT and next surgery, which is 20,000 given to the best graduating student in the and next surgery of any graduating set. <laughs> uh, public transport is akin to paying the driver to bust your eardrum with the noise coming out from his stereo. Some of them will put locally made drums to amplify the sound. Also, the activities of mechanics, panel beaters, welders, grinding machine operators around residential areas. This made me to write to the adult state of assembly rather than kill. It is easier to prevent people from getting deaf than trying to treat and cure deafness in a resource poor setting that we find ourselves. Also, we look at the pattern of hearing loss among, among the roadside mechanics, and we found out that most of them had hearing loss because they were supposed to sound above 85 decibels. Also, we also look at the awareness of people about uh, exposure to chronic noise. We found out that the awareness about using earplug or other ways of preventing that themselves from, from uh, noise, they were not aware of it. Now, the another hearing screen, all over the world, the teaching is that you diagnose a child of hearing loss at birth. And then start school at two years. But even though we cannot diagnose at birth, I mean, in youth, let's start to diagnose at birth. In the whole of UBTH or University of Utah Hospital, there's no single machine that can do that. A newborn, it tells you, pass or fail. Pass means it's hearing well. Fail means it's not hearing well. Simple. If you do that at birth, you treat the child before two years, the child starts speaking and starts school. Two years, I put the 45, 45 uh, year old son, and then he was not hearing. Um, okay, audiology technician program. I was appointed audiology technician program coordinator by Professor Eugene Okwere. I did some treatment of hearing loss with audiologists. I've supervised one and six dissertations. Uh, residents also have passed through me from different hospitals in Nigeria. I was a lecturer in the Benin University before I was appointed in the University of Benin. This, uh, this is the Bar chart showing the uh, uh, number of ENT surgeons. You see ENT, ORL, very low. Look at the uh, surgery. Look at the uh, surgeons. I mean, o and, o, uh, uh, gynecologists. Others, very high, but ONG, ORL, ENT, very low. With this second uh, 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 brain drain, this number for that good of uh, Nigeria. I even went to, part, I received foreign grants to go for part medical me courses. One, two, and three in Kenya, three times. I also went to uh, America, Uganda, Dubai, to Turkey, Ramadan. In all these journeys, I was in the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, all because I was trying to advance the cost of ENT. In some of these journeys, I booked my flights from my office, so with my, I'll be able to end this my lecture this morning. Uh, sorry, this evening. My only hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust the sweet, sweetest frame, but holy lady. Lord, by virtue of being privileged to be an ENT and an ex -surgeon. Whether you choose to be a driver like a deadbeat, you choose to be an escrita manager like a tumba Gaddafi, you choose to be a commodity seller like a little language, you choose to be an academician like Rulé Soinka, you can see the whole world if you are diligent in your affairs. Forget about nobody knows me, God knows you. Apostle Paul capped it by saying, I may know the breadth and length and depth and height. Time with family to tell of Warren Buffett, Mark Zuka, Matthew Kumi, Adeboe, all this. Through their various niches, we were able to see, we were able to see the whole world. But I want to can you permit me to ask everybody, what is the eye to which you have seen or you want to see the whole world? It's a question. For me, in the end, I'm not sorry, has been the miss by which I've seen the whole world. <laughs>
Madam, can I permit me not to make an acknowledgement to be longer than my lecture? I thank uh, my father, my mother, of blessed memory, for bequeathing me education. It's the education. I call it Professor Kubenje, Osayuki, Oshodi, Friday we will say for their promotion. But I've Chancellor, thank you for approving the lecture. Professor Obiasu, my provost, and Wishin Sado, my dean. Professor Ogisi, my teacher. I thank my lecturers in my department, Dr. Amina Okaku, Ungozi Karo Oyegwara, who stay so secondly for their love and understanding and assistance in my times of need. I thank my fellow Patricia Tube, Aziza Yahaya, Bujet Odije, Obona Regina Aswelime, Destiny Gado, Sabasina Asibo, Shola Osisa, Nkiruka Wangu, Zuyo Bis. Let the management continue. I thank Professor Osino Basuan, Mujino Kwere, Michael Okwekwale Ibadi, Dalitin Obaseki for their love and kindness to me. All the conductors of UBTH, I thank you all. Too many to mention. I thank uh, Professor Sylvester uh, Ibogo. I thank Professor Ikechuku Ezemoye. I thank Professor Nusa Baswaye. They are wonderful people. I thank Professor Mo Wanjani, Professor Hanaka, Mr. Joseph Uchechuku, Computer Analysis, ENT, and the National Department for the expert touch to the guy in the rural nature. I thank my uncles, Michael, Peter, Austin, Rosa. I thank my siblings, Edna, Deborah, Peter, Clifford, Stanley, and the families. I thank my wife, Mrs. De Teresa Adomame, for the love and understanding of my children. But I'm poor, for my charity, perfection, my Zion, Christ, the eternity. Come on, I thank God for the gift of life and his abundant love and message and for his leadership thus far. But I want to tell my conclusion. ENT had an next surgery, though relatively unknown, compared to the signs and symptoms of ENT had an next surgery pathology have been elucidated, and more light have been thrown on the practice of the specialty. I will conclude, therefore, by reminding you of the following axioms. Anything smaller than your elbow should never enter your ear. If a child, and some too, if a child has a one-sided nasal discharge, the child has foreign body in the nose until proven otherwise. And some theory, with roughness of the voice more than theory with, that person has a laryngeal cancer until proven otherwise. See an ENT head and neck surgeon. And some four, prevention is better and cheaper than cure. And some five, if a child does not hear, the child will never speak. There are some children that don't hear, they don't speak. But they enter school, KG1, next year KG2, next year KG3, next year primary 1. They enter secondary school, they don't hear, they don't speak. Is that not corruption? <laughs> Seeing the whole world is to be diligent, is to go the extra mile, is to be hardworking, is to be successful. Ear, nose, throat, head and neck, sorry. <laughs>
He concluded with the assertion that houseness greater than two weeks should be assumed to be a, malig a malignancy, a malignancy until proven otherwise. He educated us on the fact that triactivine procedure for the relief of the upper airway obstruction. About adnots and tonicitis, the lecturer, you know, on uh, you know, uh, registered doctors who use the term belu belu, specific parts of the throat, in the name of printing tonsillitis. He found at the deliberate where he did, he actually asserted that prevention is better than cure, while emphasizing various preventive strategies, both in the University of Benin and in University, uh, Benin University, Okada, where he emphasized things like the problem of dentures. He also talked about gator, facial nerve palsy, HIV, as well as TH and N. Outside this, he has also contributed to committee development, such as the establishment of the department at the teaching hospital. He has also uh, initiated the textbook that is being used now, and also has proposed two separate bills to the Edo State House of Assembly for the regulation of noise pollution, nuisance, and regulated matters, and neonatal hearing screening. He emphasized that neonatal hearing screening is the in He summarized by Asara ended his lecture by defining SCOM or eminence and opined that through the eye, a, a, a means of ENTH, ENTH and end surgery, he has seen <laughs> Please accept the indulgence of his wife, Mrs. Tessie Chima Adobame, to come on stage, and also Mr. Abraham Paul Chima. Please come on stage. Thank you so much for coming. I want to welcome you very specially, Emeritus Professor T.O.K. Awudu. I want to welcome you, Mrs. Ediali Margaret. Professor Ken Halim, Zona Coordinator. Now, this meeting today, we also have two former Deputy Vice, Professor Pius Yurobe, former Deputy Vice, Ike, the immediate former Vice, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic of this institution. We also welcome you, Dr. Mrs. Sasemota, Mrs. Obaze, we welcome friends, family, great students who have come here today to be a part of this ceremony. Right after this time, please, for the Vice Chancellor and her entourage, closely followed by all deans and directors, they will take their exit through this door. Please, we all have to wait. After the Vice Chancellor and her entourage and the entire deans and directors have taken their exit through this door, then every other person, please, you are meant to take your exit through that door, up. Through that door, up. You go downstairs to go outside. Thank you very much. God bless you. Let us now rise.
Provost, Deans, and the 